Hello everybody, this is Carl from the Elon Tech Support team and in today's training we're going to learn how to make the on-screen display work in a home controller. A couple things to keep in mind. First of all, the on-screen display was designed to be used in one media zone. That means it was not intended to be used on a video distribution unit and distributed throughout the house on multiple televisions. So this training is only going to cover how to get the on-screen display to work in one media zone only. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're going to be using the on-screen display remote control that's provided with a home controller, it is important that you connect an IR sensor to the external IR input on the back of the home controller. The uh, Elon IR sensor works perfect for this. Otherwise, it needs to be a standard 12-volt IR sensor connected. Okay, so some options that you want to select. So you're going to go to the Interface tab in the Configurator. First thing that you're going to check is to make sure that the on-screen display is enabled. At the very bottom of the Interface tree, you're going to select on On-screen Display. You want to make sure that Enable Local On-screen Display is changed to Yes. The other thing that you can play around with is the video output. By default, it is selected at 720 60 hertz. Um, but based on your TV, you can choose another video output and see what works well with your television. After you change those, you want to click Apply to accept those changes. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that you have a TV in the Media tab. So you want to go over to the Media tab and go down to Video Displays and just make sure that you have a television that, that this on-screen display is going to be connected to. That's the first thing you got to do. So in, in this case, I do have an LG Plasma TV connected. I'm going to go back to the Interface tab. I'm going to go under Touchscreen Options, and we're going to expand HC Series OSD by clicking the plus symbol. We're going to go down to Advanced Settings. Under Advanced Settings, we want to make sure that the video display is selected. In this case, my LG Plasma is selected, and I also chose the video source that the on-screen display is connected to. In this case, it's component one. After you make those changes, you want to click Apply. Doing those options right there will get the on-screen display to appear when you hit the G or OSD button on the on-screen display remote, which is pointed to that IR sensor connected to the external IR input. So right there, you should be good to go, and your on-screen display should be working. Uh, in some cases, you might want to use the on-screen display on the HR2. In that case, it's important that you select a media zone for the on-screen display. So what you want to do is come down here to Tab Config Media System and choose whichever zone this on-screen display is going to be used in. In this case, it's being used in my office. So select that. Click Apply, and now the on-screen display is set up for that particular zone. Now when you go to your HR2 and you're in Carl's office zone, or whatever zone this on-screen display is in, you're going to notice that on the bottom, on the remote itself, if you hit the G button, at the bottom of the display you'll see an OSD button. If you hit the hard button with the up arrow right in the middle, that's going to activate the on-screen display. And now you can use your HR2 remote to control the on-screen display. That's pretty much it on getting the on-screen display to work. Pretty simple. Now, in some cases, it might not work. Typical problems that have happened uh, in here in tech support on calls that we received is over in the input-output tab, the IR device got deleted for the on-screen display. So you'll see here that I actually deleted the uh, IR device for the on-screen display. The way that you get it back is if you right-click on IR devices and click Add New IR Device, you're going to choose None as a default code set and go ahead and label this OSD Remote and click OK. Now you can have an IR device called OSD Remote under IR Devices. If you right-click on that, go Import from File, we're going to import 
the on-screen display remote from the IR library of the common resource library. So it is important that you have the common resource library installed on the computer that you're programming from and fully updated to make sure that you have all the correct IR files. So if you do that, you're going to see that you have the IR library, which is in the common resource library folder. You're going to scroll down until you get to Elon and go ahead and double click on that. You're then going to double click on controller. You scroll down until you see the HCXX on screen display uh, remote file. And I apologize, it's actually the OSD remote.hir. You want to make sure that you do use this HIR file and not the IRF file. And this is the one that works. So select the OSD remote, uh, HIR, and select open. That's now going to import that file into that on screen display remote along with all its commands. So they're all there now. After you do that, go ahead and choose OSD remote. And you want to make sure that decode IR from this device is set to yes. And click apply. That will typically resolve the problem if this IR device was deleted out of IR devices from the input output tab. So that's how you get that back. Another common problem is back in the interface tab, the HC series on screen display sometimes will get overwritten. In this case, if you select replace with and you choose something else, it's going to overwrite the HC series on screen display touchscreen option, and which is going to cause your touch OSD not to work. So if that happens, the fix for that is to go ahead and update your core module to whatever core module you're on. In this case, I am on 5.2, build 568. And you can learn about how to update that on our website and their integration notes or the G training manual. And, uh, and that should bring that back for you. If it does not, at that point, you want to call us here in tech support, and we, we will figure out how to get you some support. And that concludes our video on how to get the on-screen display working on a home controller.